Hello, everybody. Um, we are waiting just a little bit uh, for some more panelists to, to join us. We have a few that aren't on yet, so bear with us. We'll start in just a few minutes. Morning. Hi, how are you? Good morning, Alondra. We're just waiting for maybe a few more people to join. We'll start at 1035, I think. Okay, we will uh, go ahead and start today. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for attending the third meeting of this truck regulation implementation group that is centered around the border. Um, we have had some very good discussion in the past, and I want to try and kick that up even a little bit today, and we'll talk about that some. Uh, we were going to start with a presentation, but uh, Brianna, do you know if Alex is possibly on as a participant? Um, I got a message from Geraldine that Alex is joining in a second. I'm sorry, could you say that again, Jill? Uh, but I just got a message that Alex is joining in, in a bit. Okay. okay, so maybe we'll mix things around a little bit then. Um, Brita, could you could you share the uh, the agenda? Pop it up real quick. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you. So, as you see, we will have uh, a presentation from Alex in just a little bit. But why don't we just start out really quickly uh, with a intro uh, by each of our panelists? Just so I mean, we're all used to each other. We've been on these meetings a number of times already. But uh, so that the people in the audience know um, who is on the panel. And I'm going to start with uh, one of my co-hosts, and that is Jill. Jill, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, hi, everyone. So nice to meet you again. I'm Jail Cruz from University of California Alianza MX, which is a, a system-wide initiative uh, trying to, to build bridges between QC people, alumni research um, faculty, 
with uh, many uh, academic and non-academic stakeholders. I'm part of the team based in Mexico City, um, and I'm co-chairing this um, this group. So nice to see you here. And uh, I'm Bruce Tudor, just again, for those of you in the audience that don't know, uh, I work in our mobile source control division at the California Air Resources Board. Uh, the mobile source control division adopted the uh, is the is the is the is the division that developed and and worked to adopt the uh, um, advanced clean fleet regulation. That's what we're here today to talk about: is how to uh, maybe best implement this uh, regulation. It's in place, but what can we do to make this as you know as as effective and efficient for everybody that we can? Alejandra, I'm going to turn over to you and ask you to introduce yourself. Thank you, Bruce. Good morning, everyone. Ale I'm Alejandra Mediterran. I'm the executive director of the OTA Mesa Chamber of Commerce. Alejandra, and I will ask my boss, Henry Rogers. Um, can you introduce yourself? There she is. All right, Anne Marie Rogers, uh, yeah, Branch Chief Mobile Source Control Division. Um, I have the pleasure of working with Bruce and his team, and we do a lot of compliance assistance and outreach. So appreciate everyone being here. Thank you. Thank you. And Alex is on, so we'll get to you in a moment, Alex. We're we're just going through a a round of introductions. Um, and uh, Tony, Tony Cruz, can you introduce yourself, please? Turning on my hi. Uh, my name is Nick Badillo. Um, I'm actually filling in today for Tony, but okay. I'm here on behalf of SDG and &E, uh, and supporting binational electrification efforts. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. All right. And my my panelist list is kind of jumping around on me a little bit. So bear with me here. Chelsea, Chelsea, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes. Hi. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chelsea Lee. I'm an associate with Better Worlds Group. Um, my team supported the Advanced Clean Fleets Advocacy Coalition in the time leading up to the rules adoption. Um, so our more than 70 environmental justice, labor, social justice advocates um, are very interested to see the rules successful implementation. Very much. And Derek, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, uh, yes. Uh, my name is Derek Robinson. My pronouns are he, him. I'm a senior researcher and policy advocate at the Center on Policy Initiatives based out of San Diego. Great. Thank you. Right. Uh, Miguel, can you introduce yourself? Miguel, Ogazan? I see you're on. Okay, I know that we have at least one person that's having problems with uh, uh, with their microphone today, so we can come back to that. And I, I am back. Oh, there you go. Hi, Miguel. No, Fernando. Fernando Barrera. Fernando. No, I I didn't see who had just popped on the screen. So we'll yeah. go over to you, Fernando, since it sounds like you got your um, your mic your mic fixed. Please introduce yes. yourself. No, thank you, Fernando Barrera. From NetBank, I am an associate director for origination and mobility projects. All right, thank you. And I think I've hit everybody. Um, so what I'm gonna do uh, is Alex uh, Thiessen is going to give us a presentation. Um, Alex is the president of the National Association of Private Transport. And he's been kind enough to come here today. So I will ask you to not only introduce yourself, but to go ahead and give your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we Okay. Well, this is a, a presentation. I, I don't know who's presenting it, but thank you for the help. I'm again the president of ANTP, and I have an idea which we have already expressed. We are, we represent the biggest users of transportation uh, in Mexico. We are basically companies that have transportation needs that we do either with every means, either trucks, trains, airplanes, and boats. But today I'm gonna call about how cross-border zero emission vehicle concept that we think is a good idea to try to solve this 
since the difficulties that today are between the borders in Mexico and the laws that uh, we have right now of how we do the operation. So can you put the next slide, please? This is how cross-border truck freight is done today. And it's been done for many years since the free trade agreement went into effect and according to what can be done and not be done. Basically, a truck from Mexico with one same trailer goes to the border zone and there a older truck, which is transfer number one, takes the same trailer and takes it to the U.S. And then that same trailer, another truck from the U.S. takes it to the final destination. And it's the same way, the other way around. So basically, why is this happening? Because the border crossing is slow, has a lot of time involved in it. And the majority of the, let's say, newer vehicles are, do not want to spend that time in this, uh, losing this time in the border crossing. So it's basically more efficient to take the truck only to the border. The, the trailer does cross and there's not an, an issue of losing time because in fact, that's uh, the, the, the product that needs to be delivered to any place in the US or the other way around. So it's been doing this and the trucks that cross the border are called transfers. Please put the next time, the next slide. And this is what happens. Transfer trucks on operation today are all the trucks that have high emission diesel engines, no things to be efficient like hydraulic fifth wheels, no safety, manual transmissions, no cameras, no telematics. Basically what the transfer company do is a service just to cross the border and to be able to make money on that, they use all their equipment with basically these characteristics. And it's not all the trucks, but that's the idea to put an older truck to lose a lot of time. So my investment is not as high and I can still charge whatever I charge to cross the border and still make a business. Next slide, please. So this is the idea. Why can we not develop a border crossing zero emission vehicle concept, which would have the contrary to what we just saw? It would be have a small removable battery pack, which could make it cheaper since we don't need a lot of batteries, hydraulic fifth wheel to make it more efficient, something for safety that not loses the cargo on the, on, on the fifth wheel, automated transmissions, camera, telematics. This vehicle would have to be street legal. That's just because it's not only going to cross the border, but it's going to go to the final, let's say, a yard for the American company or a yard for the Amer Mexican trucking company that are gonna finish the trip, okay? Next one, please. So this is how it could look. The same idea, a trailer coming from Mexico with a Mexican truck goes to the border zone. In the border zone, there's this transfer truck that we just talked about, which has uh, fast charging infrastructure in that same border zone to charge the truck if needed, and then goes to the US and the same comes it back. Developing this idea is a lot easier, cheaper than trying to make trucks from Mexico, which is a lot older fleet, become uh, newer or electric as a whole, okay? So next one, please. This is the idea. I just presented the conceptual idea. We are or can be partners in the development I have already contacted two companies. One is Inotran, which would do the engineering of the vehicle concept, and Megaflux, which actually is a developer of electrical powertrains in Mexico. And then, well, next steps could be develop a prototype, and later even testing the prototype could be done by the company I already contacted. Some of those companies are members of INTP and are willing or both of them are members of ANTP and are willing to participate in this project. So that's basically my presentation. I, of course, uh, any questions I would gladly answer, but I think this concept of crossing the border is gonna be the same many years from now. It doesn't mean that a truck 
cannot go all the way from Mexico to the U.S. or the, from the U.S. to Mexico. But it only happens if you have a clear destination and something to bring back. The majority of the freight by truck is going to follow the same procedure of using a transfer truck and exchanging the trailers both ways. So if we think that's the way it's going to come, become standard or is standard and can become for many years, then I think we could focus on developing this truck and infrastructure to charging the truck in the border zones, not necessarily all over the cities on both sides of the, of the border. Thank you for hearing me and any questions, please. Uh, I'll, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you, Alex. That was really informative. Um, and I'm going to ask that, uh, I'm going to ask Brianna to watch for maybe uh, panelists raising their hand. So panelists, if you have a question, please raise your hand. But I have a couple to start off with. Um, yes. And again, really informative. Uh, I knew that these transfer trucks uh, existed. Again, as you said, it's more efficient. I didn't really realize how much more efficient it probably could be. It sounds like, you know, certainly a, a, a good truck comes from somewhere deeper in Mexico, they drop something off, or from somewhere deeper in the U.S., they drop something off, then they can just go back and do other work. And this older truck is pulling just that very yeah. short distance across. So really, I didn't know that, and I see Alejandra's hand up, so we'll get to you in just a moment. Um so really this kind of, as you've said, I think fits right into the model that much of the freight moving across the border uh, already already um, follows, follows that same model. And so that's why maybe it does lend itself uh, to, to being electrified. You yes, mentioned, yes, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, please. No, no, I'm, I'm just gonna clarify, please. that's the majority of what crosses today is doing the same because yes. remember it's not only it, it takes a lot of time and i don't think the time is very important for a new truck to instead of wait and, and spend half a day four hours six hours mm -hmm. moving very very limitedly is not feasible it's better for that truck to prepare for something going the other way and take it back to its origin and that it's, it's a better efficiency. So that's what we need to solve is that the, the tr old truck, which is of course cheaper and uh, can, can be, let's say less efficient. We need to substitute that with a truck that can be less investment and more efficient so that we can still have about the same cost of crossing the border. If we just add, for example, a normal electric truck to do that, that's a big investment. That won't won't work because that's even worse. Putting an electric truck on a transfer fleet is too big an investment, and then they would have to charge more for the crossing. The idea is to do the same, but with a cheaper vehicle. And in fact, it's not that difficult to develop this truck. Today, in, in LA, in the port, and the yard goat, if you see the picture I, I draw there, it's almost a yard boat, which already mm -hmm. exists. So right. the engineering is not difficult. We're not inventing something. We're just adapting a concept that already exists, which is a, a, a jar goat. And mm -hmm. there are already exist electric jar boats. We could develop it directly to do this job. And then we have a big opportunity for it being a small investment, the practical vehicle. And then that would make it feasible for companies to offer the service with an electrical uh, solution. Sure. And, uh, you know, I like that analogy to yard goats because that is exactly right. And yard goats of electric yard goats have actually been popular for a while, even before our regulation, because it, it worked well in that situation. You, you mentioned um, using removable batteries. Um, yes. what would the advantage be to just using a vehicle? Because I know that a lot of the yard goats don't have a removable battery. They just have smaller batteries because yes. obviously they're not operating a lot of miles. When they're just sitting, they're not using generally it, it, any electricity. Yes. The, 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 this is kind of a losing less time. Let's say this, is, this concept vehicle crosses the border, has limited, instead of spending 15 minutes or half an hour, 
charging his battery to be able to go back, we can exchange the battery. But that's that's an option. If we put faster charging stations, then it wouldn't be required because again, it depends. That's why we need to still do a little bit of engineering. The, how much batteries, how fast can we charge them? Is it uh, better to remove them and have less batteries so that the truck will cost less? That would be the, the things that the engineering would uh, clarify for us. But that's not a difficult engineering because again, uh, you could you need to have charging in some place. So the, the proposal is charging with fast chargers in the border zones or mm -hmm. having exchange facilities for these batteries and charging for the charge battery, which is the two ideas that an engineering could tell us which is more feasible to do with actual or future technology. But the, the, the idea is that these trucks need a, a certain engineering because we don't want them to go fast. They cannot go fast. Right. So we don't have a lot of battery power needed. We need, need them to be able to move with the adequate speed and you do it using the less energy that we can from the batteries. So then they would be able to maybe cross one, one way and then back and charge and do this normally do two or three trips, maximum four in a day. So they can be charged overnight, but they could at, at least have enough charge to come back. So there's a lot of possibilities. We don't need to charge them all the way up. We just need them to be charged to be able to go back if one of them is running out of uh, energy. So there's right. a lot of options there, but my my thinking is that's a lot cheaper and a lot of achievable if we just try to do that in the border zone instead of trying to put charging stations in let's say Tijuana and then in San Diego and have a normal electric truck go all the way between one place and the other. I think that's a lot more expensive, a lot more difficult, and a lot of a lot more, uh, let's say, uh, analysis to where to put the, the charging stations. This is very clear. You put the charging stations where the trucks are operating. Of course, it's sim oversimplified, but in that same zone, we could be uh, there could be space available for, for these charging stations on both sides of the border. Okay, right. And a and a quick opportunity charge would get you a long way. Alondra, mm -hmm. please. Thank you. I had a question for Alex because um, this mm -hmm. uh, it's very interesting. Uh, it's based on the model that we're living today, and I, yes. I was wondering, Alex, if you're familiar with the pilot program that's going on in Calexico that we hope that will be implemented in Otay very soon, which is uh, a reservation system at the cargo port of entry where trucks would basically have a range of, I'm assuming these are the results, and, and I don't know the results, but let's just say, uh, Medtronic, it's your time to cross between 10 and 10, 15 a.m., where we basically eliminate the truck idling and the truck wait times um, do you see this model working if, if that changes yeah. to that model? <laughs> yes, because the, that would be even better if you have, a, let's say, a, a schedule to cross a border. That would make it even easier. But what's not going to change is that the trailer that's loaded in Mexico, let's say in Guadalajara, it's loaded in Guadalajara, and then you bring it to the border zone, and the truck, if we have the specialized uh, uh, truck, it would exchange the trailer very fast, cross, meet the, the schedule, and then leave it in the other way around and come back. So this doesn't go against that idea. In fact, it complements the idea. What we cannot change and won't change in many years is trucking companies coming from the U.S. all the way to Mexico, all the way with all the difficulties and differences. The basic job is the same, but there's a lot of different regulation, different roads, different problems. And in Me in the U.S., the same way. The, the, the Mexican truckers going all the way to, let's say, Washington State, which is more difficult than just exchanging the trailer. What needs to be the same is the trailer and the cargo. And of course, we want to be, this idea is to make that uh, better for the environment. So getting all the trucks from Mexico, which is 17-year-old, fleet or more. Going electric is going to be a lot slower than California and the rest of the U.S. Today, 
I don't know exact age of the fleet in the US, but it's a lot newer than the Mexican side. So if we wanna wait or solve the problem with electrical trucks, like you have already started changing them in California with, a, with some programs, that won't happen in Mexico, but we can do this only for the border zone. And then we can allow eventually, yeah, many years from now, we could think about truck coming all the way from Guadalajara to Washington. It, that's not really feasible. It's it's uh, today the batteries needed for that, the charging for that is way I think many years still in the future. But to at least and there the cross border zone, this idea is cheaper. That's why even with diesel, right now diesel in Mexico is not the same as diesel in the U.S. We don't have the ultra low uh, fuel uh, uh, the Uva diesel, okay? We don't have the low sulfur diesel available in all of Mexico. So we want to wait for that to happen. That's not going to happen in two or three years. It's going to take time. So that's, we need to recognize that a trucking, even a new truck in Mexico, is not the same as a new truck in California or in the US. We just went in California to a new emissions for, for diesel engines. So the, there's a difference there. And if we want to electrify the border zone, we need to recognize that not, not even uh, diesel engines are the same and won't be the same for many years between the California border in Mexico and the California border in, in the US. So that's going to take a lot of time. So if we really want to step forward, this is why this idea adapts to what really is happening in the majority of the cases and it's a lot cheaper and a lot easier to try to, let's say, a pilot program. Let's see, the trucks, the trucks don't need to be developed from zero. We have these yard goats that there's plenty of manufacturers that are already engineering or have electric yard goats already selling them and producing them. We approach them with the engineering help of Inotran and Mega Flux, and then we can come up with one that's a little bit different than a yard goat, but electrical and designed purposely for the crossing of the border. And that shouldn't be a lot of money either, developing that engineering, okay? Can I ask a follow-up question? And, and sure. no, I think you're right. And I don't know much about this, but I do know that in China, they're been manufacturing a lot of electric vehicles and trucks. Oh, yeah. Do you know if, if this kind of a truck you want to develop already exists in China? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. I I know they are in China, but I also know they are in the U.S. There's a, I I I I even have one testing in 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 a California fleet. So there's not even a necessity to go to China. But the answer is yes. The only reason why I mentioned China is yeah. in a conference we were talking about um, how in China they're developing these zero emission trucks and vehicles that are much, much cheaper than in the US. So the, yes. the idea that I kind of wanted to throw out there, would it make sense? And I know there are huge tariffs now on zero emission vehicles in the US, but apparently to my knowledge, and obviously correct me if I'm wrong, not in Mexico. So if there are opportunities to import, let's say zero emission trucks from China to Mexico, uh, for Mexican domicile truckers at the border, and let's just say they're these yard boats or smaller, and then they could still get the dual plates with DMV because they're being imported to Mexico, not to the US, then yep. maybe that could be equivalent to, let's just say a US trucker buying a zero emission truck with a stipend from California, which maybe the Mexican truck will not be able to have. Yeah, what I think, but if they it's, buy it it's from China, idea. then it's like they're buying it at the same price as if they would have had a, some sort of help assistance from the California government and they can now afford it, is my question. Yes, it's a good idea, Alejandra. I think that first we need to come up with what would it cost to do it. Remember, an electrical vehicle's highest cost is the batteries. So if we select this vehicle, and we design it correctly just to do the job that we just mentioned. We can save a lot of money just because the battery pack doesn't need to be too big. So that's a big advantage we need to do the engineering. And then if we still need to make it cheaper, 
Then we can look into your idea of many manufacturing in other places that make it cheaper, even in Mexico. That's why I'm in, involved in Megaflux. Megaflux has done, for example, we can refurbish all yard goats to do this. Because again, a yard goat is a truck that can last a lot of time because it doesn't cover a lot of miles. It's a sturdy, very resistant design with a cabin that's, of course, good for the driver with air conditioning and all that, but doesn't need to be changed every five years. It can last 10 years. So now you need to work on basically the powertrain and the batteries. And if we can do, do it cheap enough in Mexico, then we, we don't have a problem. The idea is to do that prototype of what I'm saying. Let's do a prototype, see how much it costs, how much batteries it needs. But I think that the whole concept is exactly that. Have a cheap vehicle that can do the job with electricity, and then we have a winner because that's the way we avoid, at least in that zone, to have emissions. And the idea is that the, the trucks in the US or in California, of course, would be then, uh, let's say, cleaner because of the emissions or cleaner because they are becoming uh, electric eventually. And in Mexico, we'll be doing the same at a slower rate, but we'll be doing the same, changing for better diesel engines, which is happening, and, but slower and then eventually electrical, uh, which will also happen slower, but we would have solved the border crossing before all that happens, even in other states in the future, because what I don't see changing is the mechanics of this exchange of trailers. I don't see that happening in many years. It's more convenient for the trucking companies. It's been that way since the free trade agreement, which has been a long time, okay? I, I, you know, I, I really like the concept too. And I mean, you know, just like zero emission vehicles, both light and heavy duty have contributed a lot to the economy of California, building them and all the, and all the associated pieces of, of the necessary infrastructure and so forth. This is maybe a way to, you know, also create jobs on potentially both sides of the border. I think that's fantastic. And, you know, you've talked about the fact that it would be probably a lot longer to clean up the diesel fleet. Um, yeah. And we know how, I mean, this is why we do this. So one of the big reasons we have these rules on, on, on diesel trucks and now for zero emission vehicles is because diesel exhaust is so toxic, especially right around those major corridors. Well, you've got major corridors coming through Otay Mesa and Calexico. Um, we've got a lot of people there. So that I think is a fan is a, as a, Fantastic reason to clean that up. Um, yes. uh, does anyone else have any any questions? And Jahil, as one of the uh, the co panelists, is there anything you'd like to to bring up? Really appreciate it, Alex. No, uh, thank you, Alex, for this very interesting presentation and with all the comments and what what we have previously to, to um, comment. I guess. These, as many other uh, ideas, are just the beginning and, uh, and the example on how to do this transition. Uh, there's no panacea, there's no one uh, unique solution, but this that Alex is presenting is based on their experience, on the experience and information of so many uh, companies. So this should give us uh, an idea or an example on how to move forward, um, how to look for for a smooth transition, where where to look these options uh, and where are the options? I mean, um, maybe it's not just everything about buying a new fleet, 100% uh, electric. Maybe there are other options and this, this is a, an example of other options on how to move forward mm -hmm. and still um, we, we will have to see if there's going to be financing options or uh, how to um, warranty everything on the security aspects, for example. But this for me is a good example on how to move forward with the transition, how to, to comply with the regulation 
and how to take uh, an advantage of the experience of these companies um, for, for uh, the transition. So thank you very much, Alex. And I don't know if uh, any one of you have any other comment or question or idea, suggestion. Um, this is very, very insightful. I don't see any other questions. And Alex, I just want to agree. I mean, thank you so much for your time. And as Jail said, um, you know, it 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 takes it takes many solutions. And I think this is is a really good piece of that. And this is exactly what we want to try and get from this group, our ideas, solutions. Um, and I think you brought a, a nice arrow for the quiver uh you know a nice piece of that puzzle so with that Bruce, yes please Bruce, Bruce, just a final comment can you please. bring the presentation the last the the next the last uh, film before this one can you put somebody can put it on 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 the on the, the previous one the the previous one yeah please well the the well the pre the previous slide can yeah you, just a can you the, the one before? Thank you. Yeah, that one. Okay. Just to let you know, we as ANTP are going to keep working on this concept development. That's why I put on prototype development. If somebody wants to come in, help us economically or with uh, whatever way they can help us, we are going to con continue with this. I The conceptual idea I already presented, we are, I already talked to Inotran and Megaflux. They're going to help us. So, what we need today. It may be getting somebody has a yard goat, somebody that manufactures yard goats or whatever involved to be able to make a prototype and of course, uh, then later testing it. So uh, just to let you know, we as used as ANTP with those partners are gonna continue. I'm gonna look for manufacturers that would like to maybe unpack and help us with that or somebody else, but I'm gonna start talking to the manufacturers of yard goats in the US uh, or in Mexico to develop this prototype. And of course, anybody what's showing and seeing is welcome. Thank you for your time and your attention. And just, I wanted to let you know that this concept idea, we're not gonna stop it, but any help would be good. And and then of course, if somebody wants to help with the, any other, the other things we need to work out, uh, we're willing to do it. We're not gonna let you run just yet, Alex. It looks like Fernando has a question. Sure. Hi, Alex. Um, so uh, when you're talking about like an economic partner, what, what kind of uh, support or assistance are you? So are I you don't know. Them? I don't know cost right now, Fernando, but I know I'll have that cost because what, what we're looking for today is, of course, Megaflux has the knowledge to do the electrical power tank, get batteries, get engines, get control, get uh, electrical engines in, in Otran can do the engineering because they know how to engineer a vehicle, how much speed, how many uh, other things it needed, the rest of the things that I put there in the in the idea. So I'm going to be able to put a, a money of, uh, or a cost uh, very soon. So if we want to know that, please send me an email. And when we have a number ready to do one prototype, we can share it with you. And then from there, how to get that money. For example, something can be, they maybe Megaflux can be, maybe put something, uh, uh, maybe somebody has a, a Yargo that we can uh, develop or convert. We'll work into that, but we'll have a number very soon for one prototype. Yeah, yeah, and, and what I would say is that based on that number, we, we could, we are very interested in in, in promoting like the decarbonization and, um, Want to want to play like a okay. relevant role here, particularly within the border. And we have been piloting some initiatives with uh, technical assistance funding, but we can go further. Like uh, depending on the size of the investment, we can also see how we could like uh, provide other type of financing, not necessarily grant, but like convenient loan financing. Okay. Uh, or or blended financing for to to push for these initiatives. So so, it we would sure. be very interest, very interested 
here here at NatBank to to know about how this is moving forward. Okay, thank you, Fernando. I'll I'll let you know. Just please send me an email to, to remind me that you would like to when we have that information. I'll share it with you, and we'll take it from there. Okay. Can, can you share your email here on the on the? On the uh, I I don't. I'll I'll share I'll share it. Yeah, don't worry. I, I I'll just share, share it. it. Okay. Eight. Anyone else? Alex, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you for bringing us a very thoughtful presentation. Thank you. Great enough. Could you go back up to the agenda? I just want to make sure I know what the next item is. I think I do. We actually, at one point, were hopefully, yes, perfect. We were hopefully going to have another presenter. They weren't able to make it at that kind of the uh, 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 last minute. So what we're going to do is move on, I think, uh, to the trig panel discussion. Does that sound, does that sound right, Jail? Okay. Okay. So one of the things that I want to do today is, you know, we've had, and I mentioned it earlier, we've had some very good conversations in this, in this group. Um, but we want to really try and draw in all the parties that are interested here. Uh, you know, all of the panelists that, that had enough of an interest to commit their time to, you know, to sit and to work on, uh, to, to, to work on this panel. Um, one thing I want to do, and I think I'll start with something just before this, but I want to put this in your mind to the panelists. One thing I want to do is I want to find out from, from all of you, um, you know, are you, are you, are you getting what you expected or what did you expect or, or what, you know, what would you like to see? Um, any thoughts that you have? Because I really, as I said, I really want to pull this, you know, the, this, the, everybody that was interested in this into the conversation even more. But before we do that, I want to go back and visit something. Give me just one second. Um, oh, oh, I did want to mention too, while I'm looking for this. Uh, also, um, ah, where did it go? I'm sorry, there it is. Uh, we did just send out a link to the panelists, to a document that is something that we've talked about since kind of the beginning, the first, the first one of these TRIGs, um, TRIG being the Truck Regulation Implementation Group. Sorry, we, we shortcut it all the time. Um, and that was somewhere where the panelists could, you know, could, could it at any point share a question or an idea or whatever it is, um, you know, and do that interactively so that, you know, like I said, you could go to that link, you could share it. Um, you know, we can always email each other back and forth as well, but that document, I think, provides an even easier place to put that kind of information in. Now, I mentioned that we did just send out the, uh, uh, the link to panelists, but Brina, if you haven't done it already, and you may have, uh, could you drop that into the, the uh, panelists' uh, discussion group so that everybody has that link? Because as I said, you may not come up with an idea right now, or you know, you may want to say, "Oh, I'd really like to see this in the next in the next group," or you know, I think Alex's idea could has a has a, a could work for this purpose as well, something like that. But we wanted to present that to you guys so you have it. And I'm just kidding. I'm sure that, that Brianna will drop that in. So I wanted to go back before we start the discussion, because hopefully this will maybe spur the discussion a little bit, to where we kind of uh, left off. And, and unfortunately, as you know, many of you know, the last trig meeting, the, the, the date changed a little bit with, you know, fairly late in the game. Um, so I didn't want to go back and revisit this because some of these ideas were, were from Alejandra and, and again, that, that late change uh, did not work for her. So I didn't want to really talk about this last time um, and some of you others it didn't work for. And again, we apologize for that. But there have been some ideas that we have been talking about that Alejandra, I think, had emailed to everyone. And I want to kind of revisit those. And as I said, give the panel maybe a chance to discuss that a little bit. 
So one of the things that have come up, and this goes back really to the first trig, uh, because I think last meeting was mostly presentations. There was a little panel discussion, but not a significant amount. So really a lot of that, uh, those ideas, the, the ideas that are currently out there do come from that very first meeting that we had. One of the things that came up, and, and please bear in mind, you know, there's a role that, that CARB has here, um, which obviously surrounds the regulation and things that we can either, um, you know, that we can think about as we implement the regulation. But really, right now, our main role, I think, is to facilitate this conversation as we've been doing. And again, bring you really great ideas like what, what Alex was able to bring. Um, and I know that both Jill and Renee, who I don't believe is here today, had some ideas for speakers for next, next time as well to maybe bring some ideas. But some of the things that came up, I want to bring up and throw it out to panelists and say, if the panel wants to, to do these things, um, how can we do them? They're not something necessarily, some of them are something that CARB could, could oversee, such as this, this, uh, this document that we sent out where you can comment at any point or you know leave ideas or whatever. But some of them, such as there was a question early on, whether uh, vehicles sold in Mexico are DOT approved. And does that cause any issue, um, you know, with the manufacturers or the DOT? Now, and I'm not asking for an answer right now. That's not something that, that we at CARB would do. But if this is something that the, that the group wants to do, then I guess what I'm asking is who would step forward and do that? Um, another one, there was an issue about weight capacity and, or not an issue, but a, a, a point about weight capacity. And maybe there could be some kind of, uh, of weight zone where there was less of a restriction. That's certainly out of, out of our, uh, out of our hands. But if someone was interested in bringing that conversation up with U.S. DOT or California DOT or something like that, um, Again, if you want to work on it, who might who might want to work on it as as part of the panel? And I'm looking down here. Uh, summary of the meeting was posted. We did cover that stuff. Uh, that's partially the document that we had ready or that we sent out. Um, Cal Fleet Advisor. If you guys don't know about Cal Fleet Advisor, we've mentioned it. But if you don't know, it's a great service that a uh, uh, one of our one of our contractors performs for us. It is there to provide technical information, uh, not rule information. If you want information on a rule, then you come to us. But if you want technical information on the types of vehicles that are available or you know, just how to operate these things, Cal Fleet is a great place. And it had been brought up that, um, you know, that, that them helping as much as they can with incentive funding knowledge uh, would be helpful. And they've actually been doing that and continue to do that. And Alex, I see your hand up, so I'll jump right over to you after this point. Um, what they do is we have a tool called a funding finder tool, and they will help walk you to that and help you understand how to use it. Um, the, you know, there are there are, are limits we can't, you know, help you fill out the form and so forth that you might have to fill out, but at least we can offer as much advice as possible. Alex, you had a question or a comment? Well, just regarding your comments about who would be willing to participate in ideas like uh, higher capacity vehicles and 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 weights and, law, and that type of projects, we as ANTP have a lot of experience in that, and we would would be willing to participate or propose something there because that's the part another like Jael said part of the solution. The solutions are gonna come all from electrical vehicles. We need to have another discussions of how we can lower the carbon or the emission effect of, of trucks. Trucks are not going to go anywhere. We'll have for many, many years, we're going to still deliver goods to many places, California, Mexico, wherever, with trucks. So one of the discussions, and we have a lot of information that we could present and, and participate in higher capacity vehicles as a part of the solution are very economical way of uh, not only helping with the environment but with many other things that affect the industry and 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 the emissions so 
that's the comment I want to make. So any way that we can participate or present something, we are willing to do it again. Thank you. Well, thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. So, so you know, we've we've already, I know Fernando had already asked to, you know, to get an email address from you. Um, we will make sure that our panelists, and we'll discuss this in a moment, that our panelists have that. And if someone wants to to reach out, um, you will make sure, you know, make please make sure and do that because that's what this panel is is for is bringing the solutions to the table and some of that means that you'll have to be part of the solution there was one more point um that had been made previously there's something called truck as a service uh truck as a service if you don't know it's basically a lease but it also they they usually offer a lot of other services that are tailored towards the zero emission vehicle owner, uh, such as they may put in charging, they may offer telematics assistance and and information on on how you're operating your fleet, analyzing some of that telematics, things like that. One of the questions was and it said that the regulation analyzing T truck as a service regulations, but I think that the question really there was. Are, would there be restrictions if a fleet in Mexico wanted to use that service? Let's say, I'm just going to throw out a company because I know them. There are other companies that do this. There's a company called uh, uh, Watt EV. They, pardon me, they have, a, among other products, they have a truck as a service. So would Watt EV or any of the other companies that do that, Forum, uh, Forum Mobility is another company that does that, a company called Zeem I know does that, would they, um, would they be able, you know, would, would, there, would they be able to provide a vehicle uh, to a fleet that was actually located in Mexico? So those are some things that one, I would like maybe to hear from the panelists a little bit, but as I said, I want to go through and ask each panelist just briefly, what are you getting and what would you like to see? And along the lines of what I just mentioned, does anybody want to work on certain on some of those issues or, you know, on, just how should we move forward on that? So with that, I am going to go through and ask each panelist and I'm going to start with. Uh, with Chelsea, because you're about the first on my list. Chelsea, from your organization standpoint, are you are you getting what you wanted out of this meeting, or what more might you want, or just you know what what can we bring, or what can you bring to some of these efforts? So I'm going to put you on the spot first, Chelsea. Thanks, Bruce. Um, I think something that has been discussed in some of the previous uh, TRIG border communities meetings is uh, recognizing charging infrastructure being one of the challenges. Um, and I think it would be helpful to discuss some of the updates and developments on the state of charging infrastructure on or around the border um, at these meetings. And I'd expect possibly there would be collaboration with um, the infrastructure trade to facilitate mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right. And and maybe we could even bring over uh, someone like Annalisa. Annalisa uh, Bevan is the, the chair, the CARB chair of that committee. Maybe we could have her come in and speak. Um, was there anything else? Because you actually just gave me a great segue to the next person. Um, anything else, Chelsea? Uh, that's it for now. Thank you so much, Bruce. Well, thank you. Okay, um, so... Uh, the, actually, the very first person on my list um, isn't the person that's here. It was Tony, and I had to remember, oh, Tony's not here. So, Nick, San Diego Gas and Electric. Now, I realize you're sitting in for Tony today, so you maybe haven't had the experience with the first two meetings. But what, uh, you know, after what we've seen today, and especially with that comment that Chelsea just made, which was a great one, what do you think that you know that, that this group could do to maybe facilitate you know this this being uh, implemented in, in the most effective way as possible? And is there anything that that SDG and E can provide? Uh, I think you're at least at least for Otay Mesa, um, certainly not for Calexico, but I think you're the main the main provider there. Is there any updates that SDG and E can provide in the future? 
Sure. Um, all awesome points. Um, I think to, to kind of add to that, uh, here at SDG&E, we do provide make-ready infrastructure, whether that is through our Rule 45 program or no to low-cost infrastructure through our Power Your Drive for Fleets program. And so as part of that, I think what's key to the conversation is we have a, a lot of potential applicants who are looking to move forward and might need a little bit of hand-holding when it comes to installing the infrastructure, uh, and we're happy to support. So uh, as part of that, we're always looking for participants to join our program uh, and really to, to kind of serve and uh, drive those electrification efforts. Um, and as far as the Otay Mesa region is concerned, this has been uh, a key focus for the utility, and we're continually looking for ways to not only increase capacity, but support our customers. So I think what may be beneficial for the future is uh, we'd be happy to provide an overview uh, of all our current offerings available. Um, and I, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, it's literally low cost to potentially no cost in, in a lot of circumstances. Uh, and we just want to make everyone aware of that uh, within that border region. So I'm um, happy to have that conversation. Definitely interested in uh, presenting uh, and seeing how we can best support our fleets within our service territory. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. And I know this might involve what I'm about to ask might involve confidential information. So obviously the answer may be, I know we can't do that right now, but anything you could bring also on projects that are planned for the area, at least as far as, you know, I mean, that maybe you're are already underway. Maybe you're getting power out there. I know one project, and I know this because the company advertises it. Um, I mentioned Watt EV a moment ago. Uh, I went to an opening in San Bernardino of one of their charging stations, and they have a nice big map of where their future stations are going in. Uh, and really, it's all up and down the I-5 corridor. Then they have a station planned, and I forget some of the others, but they absolutely have a station planned. They're thinking a couple of years down the road for the Otay Mesa region. So I only bring that up, Nick, to say, you know, there may be others, other things that are going on that maybe tie into what you just said too. You know, hey, this company is looking at doing this. How can people in this group support that? You know, I, I don't know exactly, but that's that's what this group is for. So um, we will reach out to you. Absolutely. And and I are you are you substituting for for Tony permanently, or are you uh, uh, just today? Sure, so I will be substituting for Tony permanently. Okay. Uh, as far as my background, um, I've been, we've kind of uh, switched off uh, a little bit here, but uh, happy to support going forward. And I think uh, just to add to your point, um, we have quite a few private installations that are going in for electric vehicle in infrastructure. And those are uh, going to be uh, for a lot of, uh, private fleets, whether that be binational or transportation is limited to the San Diego area. But I think one of the key opportunities that we have is we're always looking for participants for our program to support public, medium, and heavy duty charging stations. And so I think that's one of the major gaps that we are looking to fill. Uh, and we're definitely looking for site host to partner with on that effort. But um, as far as disclosing additional information, let me double check with my uh, legal team uh, and confirm that I can share uh, what installations are moving forward. I just want to make sure that I have the appropriate sign off. No, of course, of course. And like I said, I, I actually expect that it, it may not be able to, but then maybe even if there has been additional infrastructure, um, a new, you know, a new, um, what am I trying to say, you know, a new uh, station that's been put in the area, a new, um, um, you know, source of power, more power has been brought out into the industry. And I just, for whatever reason, can't substation. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> if there's been a new substation built in an area that might, you know, that was built to supply one or two of those mm -hmm. private customers, but that might additionally be able to supply even more power for those public chargers. Even things like that might be very helpful if, if you know. Yeah, and I think it's it's also worth mentioning, um, and I know it's not always seen, but quite a lot of effort goes into capacity planning and forecasting. Yeah. Um, we have a, a data manager, uh, in addition to several key stakeholders internally, who are working to ensure that we do have the appropriate capacity to support this upcoming demand. So this is at the absolute top of our list. And 
Um, the only thing I can really mention and continually reiterate is if we have any potential applicants who are looking to have service or the Otay Mesa area, even if you're you're not necessarily ready to go just yet, um, we're happy to have that conversation with you and identify how we could potentially support. Um, but we definitely encourage any fleet uh, owner operator within the vicinity to contact the utility. I pu I'll put my uh, contact information into the chat, but um, we just would absolutely love to hear from you, see if you have any additional plans and see how we can support. This is a no cost service that we do provide. Uh, and there's really nothing that you have to lose by having a conversation with the utility. So uh, we're definitely here to support. We don't want anybody to be left behind. But uh, once again, please reach out to us. We're happy to have that conversation. We're happy to support you and identify, you know, any potential gaps or even moving forward. So yeah, thank you. And, you know, you're so right. And I mean, we've dealt with the utilities ever since we've, you know, been working on the advanced clean fleet rule. And we know how important planning and having the information is for the utilities. So that would be, I, I, I like that. I think, like I said, we will tap into you probably for a presentation in the, in the near future. And, and, you know, maybe that can help spread the word around a little bit. All right. I am going to move on to Derek. Derek. Let me ask you the same com uh, company question from, you know, your, you and your organization standpoint, are you, you know, is, are you, are you hearing the things that are helpful for you? Are there things that you would like to discuss more that maybe we haven't discussed in this group? Um, so I'm going to ask you, I'm going to turn that over and ask you, Derek. Yeah. Thanks for bringing this up, Bruce. Um, for us, you know, we're a worker justice, economic justice focused organization. So a lot of the things that we're like really looking to like kind of hear out of these conversations within this uh, group are really about like how these, you know, first off, how ACF implementation and regulations are going to impact the actual workers that's working for a lot of the companies that I'm hearing about uh, from the stakeholders here in this room, in this space. And just really trying to kind of understand a little bit more about like what are the ways that we can like make sure that workers are supporting this movement and supporting this implementation and like how are they feeling like kind of they're the, you know they're the ones who are kind of on the ground mm -hmm. having to like manage whether batteries are lasting long enough whether you know I, excuse me I heard the, the conversation about the transfer the kind of system of transfers that's crossing the border, et cetera. Like, what does that actually look like for them? Uh, how does that timing work out for them? Is this, you know, what are the ways and things that we need to like add to this in terms of like supports and or regulatory supports to make sure that they're like uh, not, not whether forcibly or not, whether forcibly or intentionally that they're not being exploited as part of the process of us mm -hmm. moving forward with this mm -hmm. uh, transition to zero emission fleets. Um, and so that's kind of the area where we're like focusing in on. So being able to hear like what's going on, uh, even in the past presentations, hearing about like when are the kind of deadlines for when trucks have to be like moved over, et cetera, are very helpful for us. Um, but yeah, if we can even get like, you know, just a few workers and some upcoming uh, panel presentations to speak about their experiences would be very helpful for us. So that way we can know what type of resources we need to try to come up with both on the driver side, as well as the folks who are building the infrastructure out. Thank you, Derek. That's very thoughtful. Um, and, and, and thank you for those thoughtful comments. Now, I'm going to turn back to you a little bit and ask, because that's a little bit, I'm not sure who I would talk to. There may be others in this panel that would know that. You know, who, who would be good to bring on board to give a presentation like that? Um, Derek, is there someone in particular that you are thinking of or some you know, some group or something like that to help us bring that information because that's all valuable information to everybody on this panel as well. I mean, it, it is about the, you know, the people that have to implement this and have to live with it. So who could help us a little bit to, to put together, you know, some somebody who could provide that presentation? Yeah, that's, that's great. Thanks for that question. Um, I think you know, on the infrastructure side, we we have uh, represented labor 
here in this panel already with IBEW, uh, Christina Marquez. She she would be a good resource to try to connect with, you know, getting like the worker perspective around yep. the build out of the infrastructure. Um, but in terms of the uh, workers who are the drivers, um, maybe reaching out to our local Teamsters, you know, they're the represented labor affiliate for local drivers in the San Diego region uh, could be very helpful. Um, even, you know, even we have SDG&E within this grouping as well. They have workers on both sides of those, right, who are like part of the infrastructure build out and who are also already, you know, driving some of these transition fleet vehicles, right? Because within their fleet, they've already begun doing that. Um, and then maybe some folks from the port, because uh, they also have a pilot program where they've been, you know, transitioning some fleets and kind of getting what those workers' experiences might be, uh, just so we can at least have those voices within the conversation. No, that's great. And unfortunately, Christine is not uh, not here today. So we will reach, I think that's the perfect place to start. And I, I, I'm glad you brought her up. Um because I think that is a perfect place to start. Um, so we will reach out to her and start the ball rolling to get that kind of a presentation. And she will probably have other contacts. So um, thank you. Thank you for bringing her up. Okay. No, thank you all for making sure to be intentional about giving everyone space to talk about the issues that may be impacting our border community here. No, absolutely. And, and as I said, that's kind of my intent today is to, you know, I mean, there there are some of us, myself especially, um, that, you know, there we have a, a lot of things that you have know, input and so forth. But I want to make sure that everybody that, you know, as I said earlier, took the time and is taking the time and making the effort to sit on this panel um, has that opportunity. So thank you. I am going to drop down to Miguel. Miguel, I'm going to ask you the same question your standpoint or from you know your organization standpoint are you getting uh you know the information you wanted what more might you want um what comments do you have so miguel uh you know what bruce it is my understanding that miguel wasn't joining today but someone from in fact on his behalf i don't know if it's okay i i thought he i thought he had i thought he had introduced himself earlier but i could be wrong so if we have anybody well you know maybe we'll just move on up because we are actually getting kind of close on time um let's see and Alejandra, I am absolutely not going to leave you out. And again, I would like to kind of visit some of those points that Alejandra had brought up a little bit uh, that she brought up previously. Um, you know, are there some of those like uh, um, Alex mentioned, you know, even though he's not a part of this panel, that he would be very willing to to participate or advise or whatever in, you know, any efforts to talk to folks like California DOT or US DOT or whatever the you know whatever the, the appropriate entity is. So Alejandra, I know you probably have some very thoughtful comments on that. So I'm going to turn it over to you and go ahead. Thank you, Bruce. Um, I mean, I guess I was um I, as I, I think I've expressed in writing. I think we need more action items to come from this group and, and see who's going to implement them versus all sort of chatting and just like leaving it everything up in the air. So I think I'm, I'm glad you're bringing this up uh, in terms of what issues, uh, who should tackle which issues I think is the challenge, of course. And um, I kind of think CARB should help us on many things since it's your rule and you have access to other California entities. Um, we're willing to help in any way we can. I think we need more truckers. I don't see a lot of truckers in this particular meeting today. And I don't know if maybe just by names, I don't recognize any single one, but I may be completely wrong, but I think we definitely need to include the, the trucking community. Uh, but for example, one thing, you mentioned truck as a service. I know we talked to a company that does truck as a service and we explained the situation about doing it in the border. And Alex mentioned this a bit, 
it's very tough for a California company to send their trucks into California. That's why truck as a service is not ideal for the cross-border component unless the regulations somehow change and it allows it. But I'm, I unfortunately am not a trucker, so I don't know what to suggest in terms of those regulations. I think we may need a focus group with some truckers that are domiciled in Mexico that do cross-border to analyze that piece with CARB and see what can change so it is accessible to them, for example. I mean, that's just an example. The other thing I mentioned earlier, which kind of came about in the last few weeks, is knowing that uh, China is uh, manufacturing a lot of large EV trucks that could possibly be imported to Mexico. Again, there are tariffs that were announced on the US side. So what if our Mexican domicile truckers could import a Chinese truck that would be a lot more inexpensive than a US EV truck because they might not be eligible for these stipends or help from the California government. But will they be allowed to be dual plated, for example, by the DMV? That's a question that we need to tackle. Mm -hmm. and the question is who's going to tackle that question? If I contact the DMV, they're probably not gonna pay a lot of attention to me, but maybe if CARB said, well, you know, we have this rule and now we have this potential solution, can you can Mexican Chinese trucks be allowed dual plate dual plates if they're in Mexico? I mean, those are the things that <clears throat> help with that the DMV might not pay attention to us, but certainly to CARB. Or if someone, I'm not saying Alex, but someone like Alex, I mean, does have the know-how, that's what we need. But I definitely need we need to attach an action item to all these things to come up with potential solutions so the zero emission regulations actually work in this cross-border region. Before we go over to Alex, um, Alejandro, you give us too much credit. Um, I don't know that the DMV would pay that much more attention to us. And, um, you know, I have to say that uh, you're right. I mean, if, there, if, if the group wants action items assigned, then the group needs, I think, to discuss that and, and figure out how to assign those those action items. Um, most of those, you know, I mean, you said CARB's rule, you're correct. And we have a lot of resources devoted to implementing that rule. Um, however, there's a lot of items that we wouldn't be able to take on as action items. Um, the things that I mentioned earlier, you know, working with California DOT, um, <laughs> And Alex said, you know, he's got experience there. So I think the group needs to kind of figure out how to undertake some of those actions if they want to. Um, and that's that's important. I, I mean, I think you're right. There's a lot of issues out there, but that's something I haven't heard from the rest of the group. And maybe we can encourage that with the document that we sent out where people can have some more real-time input back and forth. Alex, you have your hand up. I want to ask you. Yeah, well, I went back backing up what Alejandro just said, and you just mentioned. Yeah, we I think the same. We need to get more work, more action things to start doing, and I'm willing to help. And INTP also represents a lot of trucking companies. We are not only users; we are companies with trucks, and also trucking companies that can be part of INTP. So we are more than willing to put uh, here in this work in these action items. Trucking companies, we have experience and and being fomenting them to participate. On the other issue about the trucking as a service, I would like you to send us the information of those companies to start working with them to maybe getting ideas of how to offer uh, that in Mexico. We are the correct, uh, let's say, association to work with because we can also help them promote and adapt their services for Mexico and the cross-border region. And, and, and the last part about uh, participating uh, a little bit more in, in, in solutions to any of these things, of course, we are, we are willing to do it. And, and I, I think Alejandro is right. We need to get uh, more, more, more support with DMV about the Chinese vehicles. Chinese vehicles are not only going to be sold in Mexico, maybe, Part of that can be manufactured, assembled in Mexico, so we can come up with ideas to get the support or at least present to the DMV about uh, what would happen 
even with a tariff, if the, the vehicle is manufactured or assembled in Mexico, what would happen if the company is Mexican and then would you allow it to cross the border or not? So that those things are part of the big, big problem. And those little ideas or the higher capacity vehicles, all of those things have to play a role in really getting to zero emissions. If we don't, we only think about electrifying trucks in California or not allowing industrial combustion engines, it's going to take a lot longer than what we think. So we need to, I, I agree with Alejandra, have more areas of work and more action things to do. Like just all the ideas you just said right now, all of them really, I like to, to understand more and work on them. And I think we, we could work and achieve more faster if we are, I actually do a list of that. And then whoever wants to participate, they start doing a, groups and start working on that. I would be able to speak with DMV or available or whoever on those other action items that uh, everybody mentioned. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Alex. And I, it sounds like I don't want to put all those action items on you, but um, I think I, I'm glad that I'm glad that you're here and I'm glad that you are, uh, uh, you know, willing to do that. And I understand why you are. So one of the things um and I'm gonna. I want to turn it over to to you in just a moment because we're we're getting to the end here. Um, but one of the things that maybe we can discuss because again, it's it's not up to me, it's not up to Gio, it's not up to Renee, even though we're the the co-host. It's up to the group. Do they want to take these things on? Um, I will. One thing I will commit to right now is I will make sure that you get information on some of those truck as a service companies, Alex. That's kind of in my in my wheelhouse. So that's something that I can do. Um, as far as you know, resources to do some of these other things, or even the ability to do some of these other things, um, you know, that will probably have to come from from the group. Uh, you know, there is a there's a limit as to what we can do, even with other state agencies. Just being part of the state doesn't mean we have any any authority or control or, or anything like that over over them. So we will I'm trying to think what the best way to do that is. Maybe we will send an email. We'll send another email to the panelists. Panelists, be watching for that, please. Um, we'll tee this up. We'll also send that link out again with that that uh, interactive document. So please, you know, we've got a lot of the ideas now that we heard today. Um, don't hesitate to reiterate those and don't hesitate to add some new things. So with that though, I wanna turn it over to Jayil to kind of end us up for the day. Thank you very much, Bruce. And thank you very much, Alex, Alejandra, and everyone uh, that has participated today. Uh, from my side, I'm so glad for this meeting and the previous one because this is what we're seeing to promote dialogue between uh, each other. Jayil, you're a little bit quiet. Oh, uh, can you hear me? I, I guess, yeah, I'm having troubles with my microphone. Can you hear me now? It's a little bit better. Yeah, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry for that. I'll be brief. I was saying that from my side, I'm so glad for this meeting because this is one of our main objectives to promote dialogue between each other and the panelists and people here. So, um, going to uh, also make an announcement, if I may, in Alianza, uh, we used to have a task force for the electrification of transport, then we moved uh, to include other technologies, so it was a task force for zero emission vehicle transition, and now we're moving forward to a binational working group. So we're going to send you an invitation to join this binational working group because it's going to be kind of the same um, dialogue scene here, but with the main goal of um, build a research agenda. So if you think there's something that we can help through research at UC or or the institutes, for example, the Institute for Transportation Studies, the CSERT, or any other academic institution within, within the University of California system. Uh, we're, we're really looking forward to have um, an agenda about build view 
So uh, we're sending this and we, we hope we can continue this discussion. And for that, maybe for the next meeting, we're looking for other speakers from academia, as you said, maybe from companies. Uh, we maybe it's and, make it, uh, and if you have any suggestion on who could be a panelist here, please let us know because we are so open for this. This is a space for dialogue. So from my side, um, I'm so glad and thankful, um, to everyone. Um, I guess this is it. Bruce, can I just make a comment on what Jail just said? Um, Jail, um, so I'm on mute. Please, yeah, I'm so, sorry, I was muted. Yes, please. No, do. no, no problem. I, I saw you said yes, by visually. Uh, Jail, right. see, one thing that I, a potential study that I think the UC system could work on that would be very helpful uh, is, and I know we've mentioned this to Sandag is how many more trucks are we going to have on the roads because of the zero emission regulations? I don't know if anyone is doing that study, you know, because of the weight issues on the batteries and, and what kind of impact is that gonna have on traffic? I think, I mean, I think that's a very important study that no one is doing. Uh, what the study that is currently um, going on UC Irvine, has to do with the infrastructure needed to uh, support this transition. And they're making this modeling and scenarios on the number of trucks uh, within a period of years. But um, yeah, let, let me share with you if I, if I, I'm going to ask the first if I can share with you uh, some info. And this is the, the people we're looking to invite for next meeting. So maybe they can explain better these scenarios. And maybe you can give this um, suggestion. And yes, definitely, we're looking for that uh, research agenda that we can support. Thank you. I don't remember who it was, which it might have been Irvine, um, that also did a study of truck movement in I believe it was the Imperial Valley specifically. I don't know that it's been published yet. Um, I had an early copy of it. I'll have to look back and see who that is. That may be someone also to, to kind of connect into. But um, that would be, I'm glad that we're having Irvine uh, come in already. That's fantastic. All right, everybody, we've got just a couple of minutes left. So I think I am going to say, for all of us, thank you very much. As I said earlier, it really depends on you guys to bring those ideas. Alex, once again, thank you. Great presentation. Um, we've had, you know, I think a lot of the discussion has been uh, been very, very good. And and uh, you know, please weigh in, folks, on you know the the idea of the action items or what more we can do. Uh, you know, how we can accomplish that and um, who might be best to accomplish it. Because as I said, uh, you know, we are, we are, uh, we are accomplishing those things that we can accomplish, which are really regulatory uh, in nature. So we'll put that out to everybody. And having said that, I'm looking down, we've got five minutes. I think uh, we can go five minutes early. Thank you everybody so much. Take care. Thank you. Yeah, Bye. Bye.